Okay, guys, this is the next step. Um, as you can see, the RC2TG has been moved out of the way. I've got the Komodo installed here. Now, what I did is, um, because of EMI from the motors, I found that location is important. The closer the Komodo is to the motors, the more sensitive it's going to be to EMI. Hopefully, when the LiPos arrive and all the other uh, um, precautions that I have taken, I won't have any trouble with EMI anymore. Uh, so let's start with those, with the EMI precautions, because when you're using custom boards like this, that is a consideration. Electromagnetic interference and uh, radio frequency interference are, can be a big problem for radio control. So there's two things that I've done up here at the front. One is this yellow capacitor is extra. The motors come from the uh, factory with these two capacitors right here that are uh, one goes to each motor tab and then they meet together right here but uh, Kevin sent me the instructions how to add a third capacitor which I took off an old motor so it's the same um, they say 104 on the side but I think they're a hundred microfarads or nanofarads or something I'd have to check on that but anyway stock capacitors you just uh, solder one side to each pin and that's all you got it's just it's just that little bridge is like an extra capacitor and I did notice a difference Okay, the next thing I've done, I don't know how easy these are going to be to see, but this is an iron ferrite ring, and so is this. I got them at Radio Shack. I got uh, two of them for, I don't know, a couple bucks, $3 maybe, um, and they just snap over the wires. So I've got one going over the two negative wires and one going over the two positive wires. And I still have to check with Kevin. I mean, for all I know, that might not be doing me any good at all, but... Uh, it was recommended by Eric to use iron ferrite rings. I just forgot to ask him where exactly I should put them. But that's where they are, and if they're uh, not right, they will come off, and I can change them around. So now the Komodo is in, in place, and uh, I brought it up here. Let's see if I can get it so you can see that. You can't really see the connections because I've, I've got them all tucked way down in there, but I did it right. I used 18-gauge wire in between the Komodo and the wires from the motors. I soldered the connections together and then covered them with shrink tubing. You know, I put the... That's an important tip there. Always remember to put the shrink tube on the wire before you do the soldering because <laughs> you can't get it on afterwards. So anyway, the iron ferrite rings are in, the capacitors are in, all the wires are run back to the Komodo and you know properly installed the Komodo is plugged into the uh, IR port and this will be uh, where the trigger switch will plug in that's coming down from the turret and on this tank because the S33 has a slip ring it comes down from that and because this is an airsoft tank there is no plug in the uh, IR port um, which is good that this is an airsoft tank because if it wasn't I wouldn't be able to get get away with putting the Komodo underneath the RC2TG like this because on airsoft tanks the p plug that comes down from the turret for your flash unit plugs in right here and I'm gonna have that covered by the RC2TG and I can only get away with that because it's an airsoft tank now the three pin plug here from the Viper will plug in right there and then that's pretty much it so now we move on to the smoke unit I've got the relay installed now, I'm still going to have to run the wires from the relay to the RC2TG when I get it put back, but Kevin's video shows you exactly where to plug in, and one of the things that Kevin will supply you with when you buy these boards, I mean, I'm not sure exactly which ones they come with, but I bought most of them, so he sent me a set of these. These are just, uh, they're basically single pin servo leads, but they're still connected together. So if I want to use them as a, sing as a single, all I got to do is just peel it off there, and that's how I'll get the wires to run from the uh, relay to the RC2TG. And they just plug in. They'll, um, Like I said, Kevin's video explains it all. They're uh, clearly marked. This is ground, uh, VCC, and uh, N1. i got to check the video again. I, I'm 99% positive. you got negative, positive, signal. Um, and this... There'll be corresponding ports on the RC2TG. I'll get to that when I get that uh, reinstalled. Now, the relay runs off the 5 volts from the RC2TG, but you still have to provide power to the smoke, uh, to the unit itself. So, now that I've removed the switches, you can see that the volume switch and the smoke switch are gone. I left the post there in case I can use it to mount a driver figure or something like that. It's not in the way, so I'm worried about it. Um, now that that switch is gone, the smoke unit won't work if the switch isn't plugged in so I made a jumper 
I took an old plug and I just took the two wires out of it and I um, I twisted them together and I put a little solder on them and I covered it with shrink tube. So now I've got a little jumper to go in there and by putting that jumper in there, the it's like having the on switch for your smoke unit permanently on. And uh, so now I can still use the original smoke unit port to draw power. And I split the red wire right here and I put one of the wires into the common and then I put the other one into normally closed because I want my smoke unit to be on as soon as I turn the tank on and I want the switch on the radio so that I can turn it off if I want to but normally it will be on so I use the normally closed as opposed to the normally open and that's pretty much all there is to the uh, smoke unit and the relay it's pretty much the same thing if I do the other relay for headlights the hold up there is trying to figure out how to mount it because if I put it underneath the hull, uh, the hull top I've got to have wires coming down to the board and if I put the uh, relay down here by the board then I'll have to have wires running up to the headlights unless maybe I can tie into the 8 pin maybe I can put the relay down here perhaps next to this one and tie into the 8 pin like that I, I'm not sure yet I'll have to investigate that some more before I decide if I'm going to do the headlights so there we are that's pretty much where we said we wanted to get to I've still got to mount the uh, um, Viper to the side of the receiver but I'll do that after I get the RC2TG back in place and get the uh, relay wired up. And then when I get done with that, I'll come back with another video and go over that stuff for you. And you'll also notice that I did put the screen on the fan. Because even though this is an airsoft tank and it's basically only got two wires coming down from the turret, I still don't want to take any chances with any of my wires getting uh, caught up in that fan. And that's another thing that I'm looking at as long as we're on the subject. Let me grab the top of the tank I have had problems in the past with um, with wires getting uh, caught in the turret rotation gear and that's bad <laughs> when it starts clicking and you know you're only a quarter way through the turn you know something's getting caught in there and it tears up your wires so I'm gonna see if I can come up with some kind of screen or something out of uh, maybe styrene or something like that to uh, protect um, the wires from getting caught up in the turret rotation gear so that's where we are right now and when I get the RC2TG put back in and everything hooked up, I'll be back for another visit. And so till then, we'll see you next time.